Thank you for calling machine.com. the country merry christmas from machini.com we take a big look at the brand new land rover defender sc 400 this car is land rover's opportunity to show you what the off-road world is like a beautiful box structure that perfectly culminates a little bit of a softer side for a defender one that makes it more civilized. This car inside has the power to match its hard looks. Even though it's softer compared to its predecessor, it's definitely still one of the harder looking SUVs on market. One that can go off road. I take a look at this in its perfect setting here in New Jersey, where there's a little bit of mountains or hills, however you want to call it, and muddy roads as we take our first trip across in the new Defender. A couple things to look at as we look at the outside. The front end looks to be appear soft, but the vehicle is huge. It is huge. Sitting next to a Suburban, you wouldn't hurt for feeling like the small guy. It just has a smaller looking frame, but when you finally sit it next to a vehicle, you get to see some of the specialties of this car. LED lights in the front, you can see the adornment there for wading depth. Again, wading depth is something that you do when you're going underneath water for, for those that don't know some of the off-road terminologies. And this car can do that. I'll put the specs in in the video. The sides, regular, again, standard SC model, not the top of the line, first edition with all the bells and hooks. It's probably the model most people will get. Starting in the range about fifty-eight to sixty thousand dollars. That's what you would get it for at the dealership. Inside, under the hood, we got an I6 engine boasting three hundred ninety-five horsepower with four hundred and six foot-pound of torque on this car. And the reason why we're doing this particular model is the fact that there was a lot of bad talk about the Land Rover Defender. TFL, one of the channels that I watch. They were talking about all the issues. Not only were they talking about it, they showed us all the issues. It was quite, quite frightening, actually, watching this that car go through all its electrical problems. This car, in particular, has about 240 miles on it, so technically brand new, and I'm taking it through its paces. Again, you can see the vent seals there, and again, I talked about some of its off-road prowess. That's what we're talking about, right? Gills for the water to pass through, Radiator sits a little bit higher up in here. So again, when you're going through water, you won't have the same issue And obviously the big terms around this thing is the off-road capabilities. Let's go around and look at the tires Again, the front end is pretty standard a little bit wider Side lanes there. Hopefully the winds not killing us. I Kind of like this look Restart because of the wind again the fender flare is something that I like with the vehicle and again, I'm going back and into the intricacies. You can see there's a little bit of a tail light there as well. Excuse me, headlight giving you two ways to see. And as I mentioned, I want to get to the tire. And it's a 25560 on this particular model, Michelin. The wet traps there gives you a little bit of protection on this particular model. And then everything is functional. We get into these vents on the corner there. I talked about the waiting, the off-road power, and you got your defender side. This is more civilized, so we'll see the electronic folding mirrors, etc. Matter of fact, I may just take you there right now to show you this is not your average defender. All those electrical noodles that we see are some things we normally don't expect from a Defender. A car that's meant to go through your safaris of Africa 
or through the ices of Antarctica or the North Pole, however you want to look at it. Again, going to the back is where I think this has the sexiest angle in my opinion from this rear panel three quarters back. I love the design. It's like a dual headlight for the brake and then your dual headlight for your night. That's for your night, that's for your brake. And that is pretty amazing. Then you have your side lights there. Everything's about being noticed because you have to be in this car in the type of conditions that you're gonna be driving it. Looking at the back here again, the back tire should be the same. We're gonna look at it. A big old ride, 255-60 all around. And it also expresses the same type of fender flare that we saw in the front all right to the back you can see the sill there with the big tire the spare tire that honestly when you see that spare tire in the back that certainly means the car means business when we talk about going off-roading we're gonna do a little bit of that here even though this is certainly not the African Safari or your Iceland <laughs> your ice metaled Antarctica all right top top of the hill here nothing much on the spoiler Defender logo there with the SC badge that lets you know and that P400 tells you it has the power That's why I got this one. You know, I like a little bit of power And underneath dual exhaust with all the protections you can want For going off-road and having that sustainability and all when I look at the outside my first peak I'm telling you it's a really sexy box vehicle and again only in person do you get a feeling of the size of it at six foot four I'm telling you it fits me perfect it feels like a Cadillac Escalade it feels like a Suburban I'm not saying it's, it's, obviously the measurements are not the same size those are big, bigger vehicles but when I sit inside in there of this car it gets an eerie airy feeling and it's quite amazing it's definitely one of those perfect family cars and when we do the in internal reviews you're gonna start to see some of the specialties of the Land Rover Defender Let's check it Stepping out inside a defender first of all the most important thing is that you have a starbucks bottle a good bottle laying around not bottle or, or, or drink laying around that's the first thing first you're getting ready to go off road but internally it is so ikea like fresh it's ridiculous but everything is hard plated like the hard hard surface material is met so i can hit on it and cause a damage and it still retain its frame Right, you don't want too many leathers in this with sharp spots and all that good stuff right in the car, but it does give you some touches here of that leather, but it's all well built and purposely built for your off-road experience. Down at the bottom here, you can see the plastic, and then obviously you got your driver's seat controls. They, again, bringing the Defender to the new age. I'm stepping in the mud already. I didn't want to do that. And there goes that Ikea feel I told you about in the center console. It is beautiful in here. Magical place to be. Yeah, and I'm, I know I'm sucking it up, but it's probably one of the first time I've been in a truck with under 400 or 450 horsepower and felt comfortable and stated I wanted this. So driver controls are up here. Okay. And obviously the screen lights up when we get in there. A lot of tech, but easy to use. Probably... I would not, you know what, it, it's mediocre, right? I had to get a feel. It took me a couple of hours to kind of get integrated to what it is. Um, we'll get to that. Defender on the side for the logo. See the top there, that controls the vents. And again, handrails there. You know, handrails at the top. And then again, some of the features that make it more civilized. Look at that moonroof, sunroof. Goes all the way to the back. And in that cage, whether you have a dog or a lion, one of the two, you'll have fun there. And also you can see the side sills there have some lighting so they can look out. So that's probably what gives it that airy feels, the fact that it has a lot of windows on this car. You can see below there the lighting on this car as well interior lighting is very very good i will get a shot at night again i'm driving this for a few days 
so I'm gonna get a really good feel for it let's step into the back so going back here damn, I'm tearing up the mud Jesus got sneakers on there goes that wood grain affixed to the leather then you got your hard services which again in this car makes sense okay I'm gonna sit up in the back side a little bit and get a feel for it all the driver's controls are in here I see excuse me the controls that you got in front is available in the back and a couple key things right by the way I'm sideways so bear with me you can see all the different things you need to be an off-road king right chargers two separate ports to charge right stick plugins other sexy things that we'll talk about are the driver controls all touch in the rear hard mats to the floor all right big hard mats to the floor on this car make it again a little bit something extra and then again off-road purpose you can see the side hangers there for you to put your arms in when you're going over those big rocks and in the seats I don't know what to call this there's leather plus there's a little bit of I don't know what the other cloth stitching totally egonomic you know vegetarian like I believe this is probably some knowing Land Rover and their big push for it, it being environmentally healthy and safe I can guarantee you it's it's some type of PU leather so not true leather uh, kind of like beyond meat <laughs> giving you a different brandage of of meat that tastes like it so again exciting exciting truck and we can't wait to get this thing on the road and truly stepping inside let's get another sip and start up the car well actually not start up I just want to go over the interior details so the driver controls are actually mounted up top instead of you know your usual pedigree it's usually on the console there on your driver stock and sometimes in the middle this one right up top and the reason being remember the off-road capabilities so it needs a lot do a lot of things um, on the side here again everything is space driven uh, I mentioned there's a few spots where you can just stick items and you also get additional um, power controls again to support you on those long journeys this particular model has the touchscreen interface obviously your driver locks and controls are standard there nothing to really speak about there space inside here is pretty nuts right look at that big old stick your ice and water bottles in there and have fun has coverage there let's get into the review of the technology okay so stepping in I did not know how to change the controls and I was I was getting pissed off initially it's like oh my god is Land Rover seriously making me go into this screen to freaking do every one of my changes I was really getting pissed off and then I finally figured out right because there's a couple things that I think should never be never be a touchscreen only interface and that is your temperature control I don't have time right to go ahead and turn on the heated seats in a in a control module uh, infotainment screen touch screen while I'm driving that's too much work right we're lazy that's why we bought the car right press down actually let me start it up let's get the V let's get this thing start okay pull down turn there goes your seat control I'm gonna go over everything so now temperature control it is dual sided right Okay, you can go both sides. My hands are ashy because it's really cold up here. Coming from Florida, right? I'm dying. Got my pea coat on. There goes how you control the temperature and not necessarily the temperature, the amount of air flowing through the temp is right there by clicking on that. Okay. And then the other issue I was having was how do I get the off-road stuff going, right? Here goes your low control interface. This actually so shows up here to give you in that low power mode if you're going up a hill, lets you know, hey, you getting ready to do something savage for the low range, okay? 
and then I say that, okay, how do I lift this thing up or down, right? I thought I had to go back into this info. No, everything's here. Here goes the lower to access height, and here goes the higher. I'll go out there and do a video to show you how this thing goes up. Let's see if I can get a, there it goes. You can't see it, but that hood's going up. And obviously I'm, I'm stupidly moving the camera. Maybe if I put this thing back down, you can see it. And, I, and I'll do that outside again and again. That's again, the control that you need to look at from the outside. The other thing was modes. So there isn't any sports mode, even with the power, there isn't a sports mode on this car, okay? It's not meant to do that. But if you want to access some of the driver modes, click there and on your infotainment screen you start to see some of the driver modes so let's go back there have to click it again there goes our driver modes right what program do you want to select i want to get it out of here make me look good ran i'm trying to make you look good i'm gonna do I'm, i don't do it twice there you go so there you can switch it up right and you can also use your touch screen. So you can also use a touch screen to change it up. I don't know what's going on. There goes the mud ruts. There goes the grass gravel option. Okay. And here goes the, you know, sand mode. You got sand program, you got rock control. You have grass and gravel. See, these are all options available for this truck. Um, and again, all meant for whatever your off-roading prowess is, all right? And it's a shame for some reason this, this screen is not sticking up like it's used to. Now we get into the infotainment. I'm going to do this real quick. In, in the forward-looking progress, you can still update your seats, right? You can go to your seat control and get the heated and cooled options, the climate control there. Uh, the camera option is front-facing or back-facing. I want to get to that. What a beautiful adornment. Let me get it in drive a little bit and we can play around. See that? My brake lights came on. It's for real. It's a cartoon version, but it's real. I missed one thing that was important, so I'm coming back. If you hit off so road, it's actually it gives you a me total moving, different view. Right? It's actually okay. giving me that control because it's this is one when you're going over rocks, that I have one of the modes on gets. that's telling me I need to tell. That's what beautiful you need. Beautiful screen too, guys. And you would screen. need that. Reason being is it really does there's a couple the issues job. the sides. Um, and it gives you every angle so you know it what you're about front to hit. And back, and then the, the big thing overview I have an issue with, which I think is amazing. Look towards the back gives you the total scope of the truck. From kind of seeing here, let you know what the damn so, to make up are for doing. that. Lambo okay. does this. Hey, you and your controls problems? there. There goes your no training problem. and all that good stuff. So Click again, this up. everything is available to you. Boom, like magic. That's my backside. Cruise control. Everything's that is here. My back, right? My standard cruise backside. control with okay. assistance. Uh, so for lane, lane the keeping that assistance is my rear view. as well. So that's another Isn't important that funny angle on a defender, from the defender lane keeping assistance. Phone controls here. Voice control. And obviously this kind of moves around to whatever settings you have up here if, if you get there, right? So again, everything's pretty much standard from Land Rover and it's updated into the future. So now we're going to get to driving. No, I'm not trying to help this person out, but it looks like because no one's in there. However, I want to give you the impression of the power of 400 horsepower, 400 foot pound of torque. I know it's 395, I'm rounding up. Let's get out of here. I'm on the highway. I'm going to pull it. Two. Six point three seconds to 60. Amazing in this truck. It's rated for about a 5.8 second time. By that pull, I think I can go a little bit faster. I had it in sports mode. It sounded good. It has the power. You're looking at a truck that can do all we things. Take another ride down yep, another. The Defender is civilized. It's a weak off road. I mean, it is what it is. Let me just take it. I'm putting gravel mode. Let's try to go through this thing. This is nothing, though. Oops. I <laughs> spoke too soon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, a little bit of a creek here. You can't see it, but I can. I'm gonna find the next setting here. And now snow. an area that needs some wading depth. I'm not gonna go all the way deep. I'm gonna go on the sidelines here. I'm gonna put it in the wading setting and I'm going off road. Let's check it out. Something's up with the control. It takes too long to get us into the controls that we need. No problem, no problem. I'm gonna put it back to the rack, rack and gravel setting. Again, this is all I got. I know some people saying, hey, stop, stop messing around on this light stuff, but that tractor got here, but not normal trucks can get back here, to be honest with you, without any issue. So it's showing its capability. Here goes a little bit of water. easy the camera controls are amazing so I can see where I'm at beautiful very nice got through with no issue I'm gonna go back and see if I can get the wading setting. Wade, it's getting ready to get in there. Let's see it. Great job, great job from the truck. I respect it coming to the end of this course. I'm going back into the gravel setting. Coming to the end of the road. Hey, see those trucks? I can do what you can do. Machini.com, try to bring it to you as much as I can. Thing through We're in the Land Rover Summit, Defender. New Jersey has a, a lot time. of corners. I want to see what this thing can actually do. In a quarter mile, turn right onto Hillcrest To be Avenue. even more civilized, let's take it there and take a little ride. Low end torque is tremendous. You do have to put your foot down to get that turbo going. Actually, I, I, I'm wrong. I don't want to say it's a turbo, but to get the power going. Let's see the turn in for a vehicle of this size with this off-road capability. You would think it would be freaking horrible, but let's check it out. First corner. Take the next right onto Hillcrest Avenue. Not bad. Yeah, turn off the freaking goose. Yeah, yeah, turn that off. All right, continuing down. Nice turn in there. Acceptable. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a .80G car, a truck, I keep saying car, I would I would not be surprised 
if this has 0.80 G, it's actually pretty maneuverable. To my surprise, the car is pretty freaking maneuverable. And uh, I am loving the feeling in it. It has everything you would want and I haven't experienced an electrical issue yet. However, I obviously haven't taken it off road like the guys at TFL car have done. So that's the other big difference with this SUV. Stepping back into the Defender, we're gonna get inside the trunk. What a long day, it's the end of the video. And trunk space, amazing, cool feature. You can lower the vehicle to a certain set height and you can hire the vehicle up. I don't know if you can see it, but it is raising up. Uh, gives you different solutions if you need to package something, etc. Get the dog in. In all, this has been an incredible vehicle. Great off road capability, great on road capability. It's definitely the most luxurious off roader I think you can get on the market. Is it Land Cruiser? or Nissan ready? That's the big question. In my opinion, if all the electronics are working, there's no doubt that this is probably the best of the bunch. To me, it's the sexiest. It has all the appeal that Ikea, simple, functional, but sexy. Is it worth the price point? It matters what you're looking for, okay? It matters what you're looking for because there's a Wrangler that can do the same thing as this. Bronco, I don't know, you know, Ford Ford and Land Rover have this freaking relationship where everything looks so similar from Ford is, this, is that if Ford plucked all the engineers from Jaguar and Land Rover and said you're with us It's the price point right the price point is a little bit scary, but It's not like you don't get what you pay for it, I mean this truck ultimately gives you that Land Rover badge but Land Rover luxury at around you know 60 something thousand dollars probably would get you into a P400 the only addition I would advise to get I would only advise get the 400 horsepower 400 foot pound of torque version in my opinion to me this is the ultimate off cruiser but at sixty thousand dollars and if your main purpose is just going off-road Maybe you just go off-road with a Bronco, right? Maybe you just go off-road with a Wrangler. But when you bring all the proposition of luxury and two facets of the game where it can do luxury plus off-road, there's no doubt that the Defender it defends its crown, its new crown, as the ultimate off-road SUV. Machini.com, Mike B, signing off.